So I got to tell you about this song. Yeah. Um, it's crazy that, 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 that I'm still singing it. I'm still singing this song. I can't believe I'm still singing this song. You know, this song, when I started playing guitar in public, I was living in, did you know I'm from Florida? No. I lived in Florida, oh. 1972. 72. I lived in Florida. I was living in Florida, and uh, I wanted to play guitar. You know, it, 1972, South Florida was very, um, let's just say transient. Mm, sure. So Snowbirds. W w where could I do gigs? So I, so I basically, you know, I, I wanted to get those gigs in Century Village, like with red buttons and, mm. and that kind of thing, but somehow they never called me. So I wound up playing in old age homes. And what an honor. What an honor to play for those people. And that was like much the start of my musical career. Mm. But I didn't really know it was, there was a generational gap. I didn't know music they liked, and mm -hmm. they didn't know the music I liked. Mm. So at that point in my life, I had met Shlomo Kalbach. Mm. And I started to learn his music. And I realized, wow, they all knew his songs. So this song, every place I went in those two years to play for, for the senior citizens, hmm. I sang this song. This is the first song that Shlomo ever wrote. Okay. Ready to go? Oh, we got to start. Okay. okay. All right. Welcome back. This is Yehuda Katz with Gedalia Gerfein on When the Land Sings. So Yehuda, I think the question we wanted to talk about, I'll just share with you a quick little personal history. Uh, Oh, about a year ago, I was struggling with my eyesight. I had to go in for all kinds of surgeries, and I thought I was going to go blind. And then miraculously, all of a sudden, thanks to the amazing gift of God in the world of medicine in Israel, I mean, people don't even realize this, but sheiks from Saudi Arabia come to Israel secretly to have what? surgeries done. And even the leaders of Hamas have had their children have operations in Israeli Oof. hospitals. Yeah, unfortunately, there's a lot that the world doesn't know. But I'm just bringing this up because obviously it made me very aware of the precious gift of sight and being able to see. And I was wondering, though, there's a language of lifting one's eyes specifically. And I was wondering maybe that could be the teaching that you would share. Sure. Because this song says, Esa enai el harim. Mm. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Me ayin yavo ezri, from where my help comes. My help is coming from God, the one who creates the heavens and the earth. And I found that throughout the Torah, when the word sin aleph, lifting up, is used, one of the forefathers is looking up to heavens. In other words, okay, I'm about to go through an experience and I need to see. I want to see God. Yes, I believe, but I need to lift my eyes up and see where God truly is for me. Hmm. And so when I connect to that, I can move ahead with the security of knowing, okay, God is with me. Because this uh, psalm continues with a very interesting verse Adonai tzilcha al yad yiminecha. God shadows you on your right side. And so it's that belief, I see it. Seeing is? Believing. That's correct. Right. Now I want to tell you one other thing about this, about this song. A little anecdote. I was on the radio with Reb Shlomo Kalabach in Hanukkah, the last Hanukkah that he was in the world, 1993. First night of Hanukkah, we're on radio in Tel Aviv, and the DJ says, Hey, uh, Shlomo, um, how many songs have you written? He someone says, Well, he goes, you know, you know, you don't have to be so humble. This is radio. Nobody's saying how humble you're really being. Just tell me, we know 200, 300, how many songs? Shlomo says, I don't know, something like 4,000, maybe four to 5,000. He says, where could a person have the time to sit down and write 4,000 songs? Shlomo says to him, I never once sat down in my life to write a song. Hmm. 
i.e., he just let it all come down. Hmm. Came tumbling down from the heavens for him to receive. Hmm. And this is the first of those four plus thousand songs that he wrote. Wow, this was Rav Shlomo's first song. Yep. Right, so maybe you'll be kind enough and to share it with us. To be the greatest honor for All right, number the one. highest honor. Number one. <laughs>
That was a great song, man. Yeah, thank you, thank was, you. And also very commendable because it was your Rebbe and it was his first song. Everything's in the beginnings. Great honor. So while you were doing that, I, I kind of opened up here uh, a piece that I think you'll enjoy seeing of the Baal Shem Tov on what you were singing. Oh, I love this piece. This is the piece that's talking about the, the, the Kohanim, the priests, blessing the people. Right. And when the Baal Shem Tov talks about the priest blessing the people, obviously he wants to make reference to the fact that this blessing that the priests give is coming from God. Mm -hmm. And how is that? And he says as follows. I mentioned before the coming verse, Hashem tzilcha al yad yiminecha, God shadows you on your right. So he says, Kemosha hatzel ose, masha adam ose, just like our shadow, we shadow love him when he kids. No, we love when he kids watching our shadow. Hey, he's jumping. Oh, okay, my shadow, shadow jumped. Shadow always does what you do. Right. Just like the shadow does what you do, the Baal Shem Tov says, brings down the Talmud. So, haborei barachu, the creator of the world, he should be blessed. He does what a person does. Meaning? Meaning, according to Rabbi Levi Yitzchak of Barditchev, one of the great students of the Baal Shem Tov, that when I do something good, I do an act of kindness, I am as if it were forcing God's hand to bring a thousand times that amount of kindness to the world, mm -hmm. which dispels this whole concept like, who am I? I'm nothing. Why should I vote? My vote doesn't mean anything. No, everything you do means something. Everything you do is, whatever I do in this world is reflecting into the worlds above. Mm. Very nice. You know, I want to share with you, I remember once hearing from my teacher about the same idea, questioning the idea that if there's something called free will, how could there be free will if God knows everything, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like the shadow knows, certainly God knows. So the way he explained it is that life in this world is a finite opportunity. There's a limited amount of time and nobody knows how long we have. So he said like, this is what it means. It means that God says, you have free will. However you want to go in this world, I will make the world, so to speak, appear to you in that manner, because that's your expression of free will. But in another level, this idea is expressed in a famous story, which is often misunderstood from the Bible of Abraham with his nephew Lot. It seems as if they had come to their wit's end, but which is not the case. And therefore, Lot was ready to pack. And Abraham, seemingly furious with him, says, go wherever you want. You go to the right, I'm going to go to the left. You go to the left, I'm going to go to the right, which would suggest that, you know what, wherever you're going to go, I'm going to get as far away from you as I possibly can. But that's not really true. Because when I face you, your left is my right. My left mm. is your right. So if you move to your right and I go to the left, I'm going right there with you. Mm. So Abraham was telling, look, look, I don't care. You're my nephew. I love you no matter what. Wherever you're going to go, I'm going to be there with you. Mm -hmm. And that, in a way, is what this is saying. God says, look, I give you free will. You're going to make mistakes. Sometimes you'll really fall far from me, but you'll never be far from me because wherever you go, I'm going to be right there like your shadow, right there behind you. Right, so I want to add to that by going back to the beginning. Esa enai el harim. Where do I get the power to see? Ezri meyim Hashem. My help comes from God. So I thought of something. How everything, we say beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Mm -hmm. I have learned from living here for the last 23 years that I... And all of our friends around us are given the ability to see things that you just can't see anyplace else. Because there's a power of seeing, there's a light, there's a clarity, there's so many different aspects of godliness that help you see the miracles. So a little bit of a sad story, but our friends were, were driving together from the Judean hills, coming to the Judean desert to visit and comfort our friend Seth and Sherry Mandel, whose son Kobe and his friend Yosef were murdered 12 years ago. And when we were going there, you know, just like I think you mentioned, just like when you go to comfort a mourner, you don't speak. Mm -hmm. We were already in that headspace on the way. We were kind of just driving and going through the hills, and our eyes said it all for us. I looked at those hills. And I said to my friend, Yoram, who's a wonderful artist, I said, the hills look so different. He says, of course, because 
These aren't mountains. These are the hills of God. These are the hills of Israel. You're not seeing the hills. You're seeing the crown on top of every single hill. Mm. And I realized, well, it's so true. Here, you see holiness. You know, I can travel around the world. I can go any place. As I say to students often, who say, wait, I saw Mount Everest. I saw the Grand Canyon. It was holy. I said, no, no, no. It's not that the Grand Canyon is holy. You're holy. Mm. You're looking at it through holy eyes. Yes, it was created by God. But when you're seeing it, you're looking at it through your holy eyes. Here, you're having the great honor to look at it through your holy eyes, and you're seeing holiness because it's actual real holiness. Very nice. So maybe you want to fill this room with some of that energy and share with us some insight into the song you guys just played? Well, I think all I could, all I could offer to do for this song is now that you know that, you can listen with your eyes of holiness. Mm. Es enai el heharim meayin meayin yavu ezri Es enai el heharim meayin me. Shamayim <laughs> <laughs> 